What's up guys? Welcome to Dub Nation Live. I'm Walid. And I'm Keon. And today we're going to be talking about the NBA draft pick for the Warriors. All right, let's go ahead and get started. But first things first, just because the Warriors have the worst record in the league does not mean they're going to get the number one pick. There's a little misconception out there. I see a whole lot of articles being written and a whole bunch of rumors uh, flying around saying what are Warriors going to do with the number one pick. Well, it's not a guarantee they're going to get the number one pick. See, the way it works is that there's 30 teams in the league. 16 of them make the playoffs, 8 from each conference, and then 14 of them miss the playoffs altogether. Now, the, those 14 teams that have missed the playoffs are put in into a draft lottery process. So the worse the record is, the higher odds they have at getting the number one pick. Now, before 2019, I believe, the worst record in the league had the best odds at getting the number one pick. No longer is that the case. Right now, the number one, number two, and number three worst record in the league have the same odds at getting the number one pick. One thing is for sure, however, is that the worst record in the league is guaranteed a top five pick. So no matter what, we can say that the Warriors having the worst record in the league currently is guaranteed to get a top five pick in this year's draft. Now, in my opinion, there's three scenarios that the Warriors could take for this upcoming draft. The first one would be for them to remain in the top five pick and pick the best player available. That's number one. The second scenario would be for the Warriors to move down in the draft and pick up an asset on the way. The third scenario would be for the Warriors to trade away their first round pick and get a player in return who's a difference maker, either an all-star or a superstar, somebody who can come in right off the bat and just make a difference. So next, let's go ahead and take a look at the hottest names for this year's draft. First name on our list, Anthony Edwards, the freshman from Georgia. He's 18 years old, 6'5", shooting guard, but really a combo guard because he's got really good ball handling skills. His other strengths are he's got amazing athleticism, uh, great strength. His ball handling, again, is, is amazing, and he can rebound pretty well for his position. Some of his weaknesses, however, are he's a little bit of a turnover prone and then also he settles for jumpers, even though he's got the athleticism to get to the cup. He likes to uh, shoot jumpers. So some of his NBA comparisons are Dwayne Wade and Donovan Mitchell. So as far as fit, you can definitely see a great fit uh, for the Warriors. Those players who can play multiple positions, who can switch on defense, Athleticism is, has always been a big thing for the Warriors. Uh, they love those those athletic wings like Andre Iguodala and, and Kevin Durant, obviously. Harrison Barnes, he's a pretty good athlete that was there and doing a good job for the Warriors. So you can look at OKC and some of the things that they've done with James Harden early in his career, which was to bring him off the bench as a six-man role and for him to provide a scoring punch right off the bench. I could kind of see the same thing with Anthony Edwards here for him to come off the bench and bring that scoring punch and really being able to uh, not only develop his game for the future, but contribute as a rookie as well. All right. So the next name on our list, James Wiseman, the freshman from Memphis. He's 7'1", 19 years old. He's a center. His strengths are his size, his athleticism again, uh, just like Anthony Edwards and his defense. His weakness, however, is his experience. Uh, I believe he only played 12 games for Memphis, if I'm not mistaken. And the reason was he got punished by the league or by the NCAA for taking money from his head coach, which was Penny Hardaway. He was supposed to come back, but he decided to just focus on the draft and get ready for the NBA. Now, his NBA comparison is Hassan Whiteside and DeAndre Jordan. So now this is a name that a lot of people have been talking about and rightfully so because they're looking at the four, you know, potential starters for next year, Steph, Clay, Andrew Wiggins, and Draymond. And obviously the position that is wide open is a center position for the Warriors. So it's right to think, you know, they could take James Wiseman and plug him right in with the starting five. If you think about what JaVel McGee was providing to the Warriors when he was here on the team, he was basically able to provide that athleticism. He was there to catch Ali Oub with Draymond. He was working really well with Draymond. He was working really well with uh, the Splash Brothers. He was amazing athletically. And this is kind of what James Wiseman can offer. All right. The next name on the list is pretty famous already. LaMelo Ball. 
He's LeVar Ball's third son, and he's Lonzo's little brother. Now, LaMelo Ball never played in college basketball. He's 18 years old, but he's a 6'8 point guard. Think about that. 6'8 point guard. Some of his strength, obviously, is his size. 6'8. His shooting, he's a pretty good shooter. Some of his weaknesses are he's got questionable defense, and he's not very explosive as far as athleticism. You can make the case for the Warriors to pick up LaMelo as a backup point guard. Now, the first name that comes to mind when I think of LaMelo, a 6'8 point guard, is Sean Livingston, right? A tall point guard, a backup point guard who comes in. He can play with Steph. He can play with Clay, And heck, he can even play with both of them at the same time. The difference between Sean Livingston and LaMelo Ball was that Sean Livingston can really play good defense. He had that defense where he could guard bigger players. He could switch on players. LaMelo is not as uh, equipped defensively as Sean Livingston was. So it might be a challenge to plug him in with Curry. So this would be a purely backup point guard role for him. And that's the challenge that I see for the Warriors. Obviously, when you got a point guard like Stephen Curry, do you really want to invest a high draft pick on a backup role? So that's going to be interesting. All right. Next name on the list, Cole Anthony, the freshman from North Carolina. He's a 6'2 point guard, 20 years old. Some of the things that he does well is he's a score first point guard, very aggressive scorer. He's got good bounce. But some of the weakness that they call out for him is his efficiency. Uh, just because he's so aggressive in scoring the ball, they may say he struggles to find his teammates and, and make plays for his teammates at times. His NBA comparison is Austin River. Now, this is a really interesting fit for the Warriors. Cole Anthony is a really good player, but he's a point guard. Now, if you're the Warriors and you have Stephen Curry as your starting point guard, does it really make sense to invest that high of a draft pick on a backup? I don't really see that. It would be hard for the Warriors to pick up Cole Anthony and just plug him right on the bench. Curry being, being in his prime, it's going to take a long time for him to really become a starter. So this is a tough one. I don't really see that happening. Next name on the list, Denny Avija. The 19-year-old small forward from Israel. Some of the things he does well, he's, he's very versatile. Uh, he can play from shooting guard to power forward. Great at ball handling. He's a great passer. Some of his weaknesses, however, is that he doesn't have an elite burst. And he settles for mid-range jumpers a lot. His NBA comparison is Hiro Turgulu. And one thing that I've heard is the Warriors were planning to scout him really hard before the pandemic hit. But as far as style of play, do the Warriors really want to bring in a non-athletic small forward? That hasn't been the case with their success recently, right? Would that really work well with what Steve Kerr wants to do uh, and how he plans to utilize a small forward position? Final name on our list, Obi Toppin, the sophomore from Dayton. He's a power forward, 6'9". He's 22 years old. Some of the things that he does well is he's got great athleticism as well. He's a consistent finisher at the rim. And some of the knocks on him is that he's a poor rebounder for his size. His NBA comparison is Kenya Martin or Sean Marion. Now, Obi is one of the guys that went on record and said that he would be a great fit with the Warriors. And rightfully so, you can really make a case for Obi to be plug and play uh, in different spots with different players. However, with Pascal doing so well, Draymond Green obviously being on the team, Looney coming back healthy next season, Marquise Chris has been doing amazing uh, this past year. I see him getting a bigger role next season. Unless the Warriors move one of those players in a trade, it's kind of hard to see the Warriors picking Obi Toppin with the top five pick and then adding him on to what they currently have. Now, what do you guys think? If the Warriors were to select top five, which player would you like to see with the Warriors next season? Let us know in the comment section below. Now, what we're looking at here are teams that are potentially going to have a high draft pick falling out of the top five. First team, New York Knicks. Now, obviously, the New York Knicks haven't had that much talent uh, in the last few years. But there's one player, Dennis Smith Jr., the 6'2 point guard. If you remember him, he was with the Dallas Mavericks when he first joined the league. And he was doing amazing. He got traded to the Knicks, and in his first year, he was averaging 14.7 points, 5.4 assists, and 28 minutes of playtime. He's very athletic, and although he's a good scorer, he's not a good jump shooter. Next, the Chicago Bulls. Now, the Chicago Bulls have Thaddeus Young, uh, who hasn't been too happy about his role with the Chicago Bulls right now. Thaddeus is 6'8", power forward, good rebounder. Uh, he's a good finisher. 
Uh, he's not so much of a shooter. One thing about him though is he's got a higher price tag. He's scheduled to make 13.5 million next year and then he's got a team option for uh, the following year for 14 mil. But he's a great locker room guy, a veteran. One of the things that we've heard Bob Myers say about next season is that he would like to add some more veterans. The team is really young right now, so what they really like to do is add some veterans. Next team on the list, the Charlotte Hornets, Steph's hometown. Now, the Charlotte Hornets, they have Terry Rozier, Scary Terry, as they call him, 6'1", backup point guard, great at scoring. He's not so good at passing, but he's a fearless player who can play on both sides of the floor. Next team on the list, the Washington Wizards. Now, the Washington Wizards are destined to get a high draft pick. Whether it's going to be a top five or not, I don't know. Now, I may be wrong here, but I can't find anybody on the Wizards that the Warriors would be interested in getting. Obviously, they got some all-stars that they could potentially trade, like Bradley Beal or John Wall. I can't see anybody else other than those two players. So if you know a player that the Wizards have that would be a good fit for the Warriors, please let me know in the comment section because I can't see anybody right now. Final team on the list, the Phoenix Suns. Now, this is by far the one that I like the most. The player that I would think would make sense here would be Ricky Rubio. 6'3 point guard, great playmaker. He's not a shooter. He's never been. He's a great veteran, and he's got great basketball IQ. Now, he does cost a lot as well, but I think this would be a great fit for the Warriors. Now, what do you guys think? If the Warriors were to move down in the draft, who would you like to see coming back to the Warriors? Let us know in the comment section. All right, let's talk about our final scenario for the Warriors to trade away their first round pick for this year's draft and pick up a difference maker. A couple of names that have been thrown around, one of them, Bradley Beal from the Washington Wizards, shooting guard, two-time All-Star. So this is somebody who the Warriors could potentially get, start him as a shooting guard, move Clay at the small forward, or bring him off the bench um, and having that scoring punch right off the bench. Another name that's been thrown around, Aaron Gordon, the power forward from Orlando. He's 6'8", could do a lot of damage. Uh, you could play him with Draymond because he's that athletic. He would be an interesting name to add. I don't really quite see the fit with Aaron Gordon, but he's an interesting name. Another name that's been thrown around in the recent days is Miles Turner, the center from Indiana. He's 6'11". Now, this would make a lot of sense. If you remember, when Paul George got traded away from the Pacers, the, the franchise got turned over to Miles Turner, and he was carrying the team on his shoulders. Now, he's a center that can play defense. He's athletic. He can play good defense. He would be a great fit with the Warriors. But I think all of us as Warrior fans have one name in mind that we would love for the Warriors to get, Mr. Giannis Antetokounmpo, the 6'11 forward from the Milwaukee Bucks, four-time All-Star, reigning MVP. Imagine Giannis with his Splash Brothers. That would be crazy. And also, not only for now, but the future too. So now, what do you guys think? Which one of these players would you like to see with the dubs? Thanks for watching, guys. Catch us on the next video where we talk about how the Warriors can get Giannis. Like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any new videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.